Hello and welcome. This video is going to be a brief introduction to the most basic use of the Ladybug to PHPP toolkit for the construction of PHPP energy models. The PHPP, of course, being the Passive House Planning Package, which is used for the design and certification of Passive House buildings to the International Passive House Institute standard. My name is Ed May, and I'm an architect and Passive House consultant with Building Type. We're a small building performance consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and we work primarily on Passive House projects and other uh, high performance buildings throughout North America. So I hope that this video and the associated series are going to be a helpful introduction to the new Ladybug to PHPP tools, and that they're going to help you get your own process up and running pretty quickly. In this video, we'll look at the most basic setup for using this toolkit and how to connect your Rhino and Ladybug tools models to the PHPP Excel model. In future videos, we'll go a lot more in depth on several of the specific components and whatnot. But just to get started here, I want to stick to the simplest workflow so that you, you can get up and running really quickly and begin to get a sense of how the Ladybug to PHPP toolkit functions and what sort of things are required. So let's jump right in. First of all, if you haven't already, make sure you take a look at our download and install help video if you need any assistance at all getting your, getting your system configured and set up with the right files and, and uh, the right downloads. Uh, you can, of course, also take a look at the, uh, the website for detailed instructions on the uh, installation and setup of the Ladybug to PHPP tools, and I'll, I'll be sure to put a link in the notes below. Secondly, just to give a little context for this tool, the Ladybug to PHPP toolkit is part of the larger Passive House Tools project, which is a collection of open source tools to help Passive House designers and energy modelers uh, do a better job, uh, uh, work more quickly, uh, more efficiently, make fewer mistakes, etc. If you want to see any of the other Passive House tools, um, Check out the Passive House Tools website, uh, passivehousetools.com or passivehouse.tools. Um, I'll leave a link in the uh, the notes and description below if you want to see, want more information on that. Um, do note right up front that everything here is all a work in progress, and if you want to contribute to either this or any of the other Passive House Tools projects, uh, check out the passivehousetools.com website for um, the GitHub link and uh, more information on that side. Uh, and then lastly, note that this toolkit is designed to work on top of and, and uh, alongside of the current Ladybug tools. And at the time of this recording, the most current version there, I believe, is version 1.1. So if you're not familiar with the Ladybug tools, make sure and check out their website um, and note that you will need those Ladybug tools version 1.1 or better installed in order for any of this Ladybug tools to PHPP functionality to work for you. Okay. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump right in and let's take a look at what it takes to take a Ladybug Tools model and push it into the PHPP. So I'm here in my system and I'm in Rhino. Uh, so the Ladybug Tools to PHPP workflow works with Rhino version 6 and version 7. It will not work with version 5. So if you're still using version 5, unfortunately, that, that will not work. But it should work with version 6 or version 7. So e either one should work. I'm working in version 7 here, but again, should work in either one. Um, and the goal of this toolkit is to take your Rhino and Ladybug Tools model and push it into the PHPP. Uh, thus the name, Ladybug Tools to PHPP. And so we'll be working in Rhino here, and we'll be working in Grasshopper as well, which of course is where the Ladybug tool components are uh, are currently um, uh, configured to work. So I'm in uh, Rhino here, and just so we're all on the same page, let's go. I'm going to go ahead and make a brand new file. So I'm just going to come up here to File New, and let's make a brand new empty file. And I'm just going to use large objects meters as my template. So uh, one note about units, um, and we'll talk about this as we go through. The ladybug tools all function in um, in SI uh, units, and so that's the sort of assumption there. We'll talk about different ways that you can manage that if you're working in North America and you want to work in feet and inches. So we'll certainly have some options there. In any event, I'm going to start new objects, uh, large objects, meters, and go ahead and say open, and just make a brand new, brand new um, configuration, just so we're starting from from zero. 
Um, one other brief thing, you might see a little bit of a lag on my system because I'm recording here as well. Hopefully everything should be um, uh, uh, nice and fast on your, your system if you're, as long as you're not recording a video at the same time. In any event, um, I'm going to come in here to perspective, just double click on that. So here we are, I'm just in a blank rhino scene. And to get started, what we're going to do here is we're going to make the simplest Ladybug Tools version 1.1 model that we could possibly imagine. We'll make a little box with a single window. And then we'll just look at how we take that and push that out to different, um, different, different end uh, uh, locations. So how can I take that and have that data flow off to an Open Studio model? How can I take that same data and have it flow off to a PHPP? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Grasshopper. So let me load up Grasshopper here, and um, we'll uh, uh, get these two things configured. And then, as I said, we'll, we'll build ourselves a, a simple little pillbox with a, uh, just a, maybe a single window, maybe two windows or something. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, see about building a, a Ladybug Tools model and, and then, again, flowing that off into different places. So I'm going to take my Grasshopper and just put it on one side, and I'll take my Rhino and put it on the other side over here. All right. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Whoops. All right. Just hide this so we have a little more screen here. Um, okay. So if I wanted to build a super quick Ladybug Tools model, what would be the easiest way? So let me come over. Let me expand this a little bit so we can see. So I've got all my installed components up here. And if we go to the Honeybee, uh, so we've got all sorts of geometry and, and model creation tools here in Honeybee. Honeybee, of course, is the part of Ladybug tools that we use to create Energy Plus models. And so we've got all sorts of creation tools here. So we've got Room from Solid and uh, Face and Honeybee Room and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I like to use this Honeybee Face. I think that's probably the, the easiest one for, for the types of models that we work on. Um, so what I'm going to do is just grab this Honeybee Face and I'm going to drop this onto my Grasshopper Canvas. You'll see it go off and think for a second it needs to load up all of those Ladybug and Honeybee uh, libraries into memory. But as soon as it's done that once, it should uh, not have to do that in, uh, uh, ever again. And uh, so we've got our face component here in our geometry scene, in our, in our grasshopper scene. And what kind of geometry should we model? Well, let's just model, uh, like I said, a simple little box. So I'm going to come in here to my grasshoppers or my rhino scene now. I'm going to come up to the standard toolbar. Let me come over here to box and let's just make a quick box. I'm going to just make a quick box about 10 meters by 10 meters. We could use grid snap if you want. It doesn't really matter. And um, I'm just going to make it, say, three meters. Let's say three meters tall. So I've got a little box. It's about 10 meters to a side, and it's three meters tall. Now, you could make geometry however you prefer. I'm just going to make it super quick here for, for our purposes. Keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going to select this guy and come over here to my grasshopper scene, and I could reference that geometry and using any of the typical grasshopper tools. I could use a pipeline. I could use any of these types of things. All right, so there we go, and let's call this BREP. We'll call this um, geometry. I don't know why not. And all we need to do is then pass that over to the geometry input on our uh, Honeybee Create face. And what do we get when we do that? Let's take a quick look. We get the faces, and as we would expect, Honeybee is very smart, and it is smart enough to take that single box, solid, and split it up into six individual faces. Uh, of course, they have these big ugly names because we haven't given any names to everything. We have not assigned any parameters. We've not told it anything about what types or what boundary conditions, any of that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter. We're not going to look at that now. Again, we're, we're going to try and build the simplest possible Honeybee or Ladybug Tools model that we can and then push that out to PHPP. We will come back and talk all about all the different parameters and inputs, etc., etc. Okay, so fine. So we've now built our faces. What would we now do in order to take this and turn it into or send it off to Open Studio, for instance, if I wanted to build a, a uh, Energy Plus model, right, a standard Honeybee workflow where I build the geometry and then send it off? Well, let me open up my grasshopper scene a little bit here. I would come up to create. And the first thing, of course, that we have to do in the Ladybug Tools version 1.1 is we need to build our Honeybee rooms. Uh, Rooms would be analogous to uh, zones in sort of energy plus parlance. Uh, so a room is a, a sort of thermal zone. I would take all my faces. I would pass it into the faces. 
Um, I could supply all sorts of other information, all the standard ladybug tools, honeybee um, uh, controls, uh, of course, for things like your construction sets or programs or anything else. We'll leave it all blank for now. Just leave it all at the default. And uh, then once we've built our rooms, of course, any model can be made of, of as many rooms as you want. We would take all the rooms and we would send those off to a honeybee model. We would collect all the rooms together all the shades, all the everything else. We would collect it all together in a model. Of course, we could provide a bunch more information there. And then lastly, let me just relocate a little bit. If I then wanted to send this whole assembly, faces which are collected into rooms, rooms which are collected into models, send that whole assembly off to Open Studio, it's, it's relatively straightforward. I would come up to Honeybee Energy, grab my Open Studio export, drop that onto the canvas, connect model to model, and then as soon as I was happy with everything, I could just say run, set that to true, and this would then go off to Open Studio. So, so far, that's all just basic ladybug tools and honeybee. Hopefully all of that makes sense. If none of that makes sense, if you're confused by any of that, um, check out the ladybug tools, uh, templates and support and uh, videos for all sorts of um, useful information on the use of these honeybee and ladybug tools. But so far, this is just a super basic honeybee energy plus model. Hopefully everything here makes a lot of sense. So the question though is, what if, I don't want to send this model off to Open Studio and Energy Plus to run the simulation. What if instead I want to take this exact same model and send it off to the PHPP, the Passive House Planning Package? Well, as far as the construction of the model itself, right now we don't need to make any changes whatsoever. Instead, what I'd like to do is take this model and just send it off to a different location. And so we can do that using the new Passive House Tools Ladybug, uh, uh, Ladybug to PH components. So up here under PH Tools, Passive House Tools, uh, if you've installed the Passive House Tools functions, you'll have a new uh, toolbar here, which is labeled PH Tools. And in the PH Tools, notice there's all sorts of new components. And these new components are going to be used to set up, configure, create the PHPP, and then send it off to Excel. Now we'll come back and look at all of these in quite a bit of depth. For now, we can ignore all of these. We only need a single component, which is this guy right here. So if I come over to O2, and notice that there's a component right at the top here, which is called LBT to PH Convert Ladybug Tools to PHPP. So if I just grab that guy, drop him onto the canvas here, we get a new component. Let me just do a little bit of rearranging. And in order to send my Ladybug Tools model off to PHPP, all I need to do is take the model, the same Honeybee model, and instead of sending it to this uh, Open Studio component, we're just going to connect it up to this HB model input down here on the bottom. And this guy will do a whole bunch of conversion. Uh, it'll go off and do some work. So notice the basic organization here. We have our Honeybee model. We do all the same uh, steps when it comes to model creation. And then at the end, instead of sending the model to Energy Plus, we're going to send the model to PHPP. So that's the basic kind of um, configuration to keep in mind, or the, the, uh, uh, the basic structure that you want to keep in mind. So how does this work now? How does this actually get to PHPP? Let me zoom in here so we can kind of take a look at this a little more closely. Again, lots of inputs. We will talk about these later. We don't need to do anything for these right now. Uh, we can send this right off. So what do we have here as output? Well, the main thing that we have are this is this um, Excel objects output. So let's take a look at what's coming out of this Excel objects output. And let's see what we have here. So I'm just going to hook it up to a panel. And let's see what we have. Generic ground roof membrane, insulation, so clearly a bunch of materials, uh, a bunch of, uh, what do we have down here? A bunch of ugly names, some values, exterior wall. What are we looking at here? Well, what we're looking at is a, a series of what we call Excel objects or PHPP objects, which are ready to get written out to a PHPP file. So what this component here has done 
is it's read and interpreted the honeybee model. It's sort of split it up and it's adapted everything in the honeybee model into PHPP format and PHPP um, uh, uh, configuration. And notice that what the uh, each of these elements is made of is three pieces. We have a worksheet with a name, we have a cell, or in Excel parlance, a, a range, and then a value. And so all this, all that we need to do now is go through this and go to the PHPP, the U values worksheet, cell M13, and write the value zero. The PHPP worksheet U value U values worksheet, cell M14 value zero, and so on and so on and so on, right? And so you can see we, here we've got a bunch for the areas worksheet. There's a whole bunch of elements for the ventilation worksheet and some climate, some areas. Um, notice also that there's a whole bunch of blank branches in this uh, output here. Uh, so we have a lot of information which is sort of missing or not configured. All of this can be filled in using all of these various tools up here, and we'll sort of come back and take a look at that later. But at, at its most basic, if all you have is six surfaces and, and nothing else, you know, the, the PHPP will sort of um, uh, get built uh, based on that. Now, now, where did all this information come from? What is generic heavyweight concrete, generic roof? Where did all this stuff come from? Well, that's being done by Honeybee. Honeybee is going to, in the absence of specific information, it's going to try and build a sort of generic model based on whatever whatever you do give it. So a lot of this is coming directly from Honeybee, so this is sort of how they've set it up to work in the absence of specific information. Of course, we can always go in and override any or all of this and add our own information to all sorts of uh, places here. And we'll, as I said, see that in, in uh, later sections. Okay, so we've built our honeybee model. We've converted it, everything in the honeybee model into sort of PHPP ready objects. So how do I then get this into Excel? Like how does this, like how does this thing all get into Excel? Do I need to like copy and you know copy and paste it in or something like that? Well, so what we've done is we've built a, a whole set of tools to allow you to connect this to Excel in uh, real time, uh, as it were. So if we come up here to our PH tools toolbar again, and we go to the O3 Excel, uh, notice that there's a couple of different uh, components here. There's one called Open Workbook one called read workbook, and then a last one called write workbook, and they do just what you would think. So we can open an Excel workbook, and then we can write to it using these components. So let's take a look at open workbook first. Let's take a look at that. So this is the first step. We need to open an Excel workbook in Excel parlance, an Excel file, uh, what we would call an Excel file. It's called a, an Excel workbook. And notice that the component here needs a couple of things. So it's got a it's got a run. So we would hook up, hook that up to a you know boolean toggle. And when we were ready, we would set that to true. And then it needs a couple of other inputs. It needs a source PHPP, and then a new or target PHPP. So what's happening here? Well, this the way this component works is it's going to require that there's a blank or a source PHPP somewhere on your computer, somewhere on your file system. It's going to reach out to that blank or source PHPP. It's going to make a copy of it. And then it's going to write to that copy. So we've tried to be careful not to overwrite or wreck any of your you know, uh, original files. So it's always going to make a copy before it does any writing or adding to the PHPP. So you need to supply it a source, you need to supply it a blank PHPP, and then a location you would like to save the copy to. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Let me move this over a little bit. And the way you do that is just by inputting the path. You just need to input the path. So we could either type in the path here, or we could use a grasshopper path component. Let's use the grasshopper path component. So I can come here and say file path, and fuck that up. And in order to set that file path, all I have to do is come in here to the path component, right click, and say select one existing file. And I'm just going to navigate to my C, coal, my C drive. And I've already set up ahead of time. I've got a folder here called ladybug to ph example. And in there, I've got a source PHPP file. Now you you probably have this any you know I don't know where this is on your computer but you have to have a source PHPP file a blank PHPP file 
So I'll come on here and say open and say open and notice that that path now flows through into our source. Now, now wait a sec, what is this file? What did I just point it to? Well, let me go to my, let me go to my file viewer and let's take a look. So again, uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I just made a quick folder on my C drive. You could put this wherever, you know, wherever it lives on your computer, in your Dropbox or in your, you know, uh, Microsoft Teams or whatever you're, you're using. But all this is, let me double click on it and open it up. All this is, is a blank PHPP. It's just a, a blank PHPP file. Right? So no, nothing here. So verification, all blank, areas all blank. So it's just, just what it sounds like. It's just a blank PHPP file. It's an empty PHPP file. This is the source. This is We're going to make a copy of this file, and then we're going to write to it. So again, you have to have this on your computer somewhere. Obviously, for this all to work, you need to own PHPP, right? So you need to um, have a copy of PHPP and, and uh, use that as your, as your source. So again, for, for example purposes, I just dropped it here into this file, but of course you can point it wherever you want. Okay, so that'll be our source. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to tell the tool here where what the destination is. Let me clean up a little bit here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna make an, uh, another version over here, and let me do this. I'm gonna say copy the data, whoops, make it just a regular panel, I'll paste that in, and instead of source PHPP file, now I'm just going to give it a new name. So maybe I'll say output, or I'll say, I don't know, my results file. And I'll say, OK. And notice I'm saving that to the same directory. So I have a source PHPP file, and then I have to provide a, a, a target. Where, you know, it's saying, where would you like me to save all the information once I've written it? And then we just hook that up to the new PHPP path. So once we have provided a path to an existing blank PHPP and a path to a target PHPP, we can now go ahead and run this open Excel workbook component. And I'll just turn that to true. And you'll see that the um, uh, uh, Rhino and Grasshopper will go off and think for a second or work for a second. And as soon as it's done, notice that we get a new Excel instance, which is now spooled up. So we have a new Excel workbook, which just opened. And notice the name of it, MyResultsFile.XLSX. Let me go back to the file viewer for just a second so you can really see what happened. Here's my source PHPP file, and here's the copy. So again, we've tried to be careful not to overwrite anything important. So it's going to make a copy of that source before any writing or anything occurs. And this is just a regular PHPP. It's a blank PHPP. Right? Go to Areas Worksheet, nothing. But the important thing is that this PHPP is now connected to my Grasshopper scene. So Grasshopper is now able to talk to that instance of Excel. Let me kind of rearrange things a little bit here. I know there's not a lot of screen real estate. I changed my resolution settings so that everything would be, you know, so you'd be able to see everything. But it means we don't have a lot of screen real estate here. Um, so uh, I'm in the areas worksheet of my PHPP. And now this Grasshopper file can talk to this Excel file. So th this component sort of um, uh, uh, marries these files together, and, and they're now sort of able to talk to one another. So what we would like to do is take all of this information and go through one item at a time, go to the U values worksheet, go to cell M11, and input this value. Go to M13, input this value, M14, input this value, et cetera, et cetera. And so we can do that using this write to Excel component. So if I grab this write to Excel component and drop it onto the canvas here, notice needs just a few inputs here. It's going to take Excel objects as an input. So all of the Excel objects get input into the Excel objects. So I'll go ahead and just connect that up. And then once Excel is open and running, I take the Excel instance, which is now connected to Grasshopper, and I just connect it up to Excel. And this will think for a second. It'll go off and do a little bit of writing. And as soon as it's done, notice all of the information from our Grasshopper scene is now being pushed into Excel. So I've got a bunch of surfaces with big, big ugly names, admittedly. We'll talk about it, fix all that. 
uh, what else do we have? We've got, you know, surface areas. They all have, um, they all have components associated with them. So if we were to go to the U values uh, uh, worksheet, notice we've got, you know, generic ground slab. We've got all of our components now flowing through into our, um, into our worksheets here. Uh, of course, we could, you know, do a little reorganizing. Things need to get cleaned up a little bit. Um, you know, all of this stuff is is flowing through now uh, from our grasshopper scene into our um, into our PHPP. And so, for instance, notice notice the um, sizes over here. If I was to uh, if I was to come into my Rhino scene and just flex this a little bit. So let's say I might just make it a little bigger. This will update and flow through. And notice that these guys here just changed their size, right? So these guys are being driven by the Rhino scene. Again, I know there's not a lot of screen real estate here. It's a little, everything's a little jammed up. But um, uh, you know, as I change my Rhino scene, the geometry flows through my uh, Grasshopper setup and then into the PHPP. I can change that back. I'll scroll, scale that back down. I go from 200 uh, down to uh, 105. And everything else updates accordingly. So everything is updating. Everything is live. All the geometry, the components, the windows, um, all of that is all uh, uh, live and and flowing through. Make this a little bigger so we can see the setup here. So that is all there is to it. It's a relatively straightforward workflow. To get a basic model flowing, we have our uh, honeybee model over here. So we create our honeybee model. We then convert that honeybee model into a series of Excel writable objects and PHPP objects, and then we write them out to Excel. Now, of course, as you see, we'll go back to the PHPP for a second, as we see in the PHPP, there's a tremendous amount of information which is missing. So for instance, if I was to go to check and just look at the errors, there's all sorts of errors that are popping up. Go to verification, notice there's a whole bunch of stuff which is not, which is not here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff which is missing. I'm not getting any results. Of course, a basic, go back to Grasshopper for a second, a basic Honeybee model like this is not a complete PHPP. There's a huge amount of information which is not present yet. But of course, we can set all of that information. And so up in our PH tools ribbon here, we've got all sorts of tools that allow us to set things like thermal bridges and summer ventilation, create spaces and set um, a TFA, uh, configure all your ventilation systems and domestic hot water systems, create windows and calculate shading, um, deal with all the occupancy and appliances, um, uh, set up cooling systems and um, heating systems and the like, configure the PHPP, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of additional functionality. We can build this out to a really high level of detail. We can basically configure and set up anything we want inside of the PHPP. But if all you want to do is get a super basic set of geometry out from Rhino into your uh, PHPP model, um, this is all it takes. It's just a few components here. So hopefully that is working for everybody. Hopefully you're able to get that working. Um, hopefully you're able to rig that up and connect that up. I guess the last thing I should say is just uh, go back to Excel for a second. Um, you know, this is just a PH, regular PHPP file. Um, it has a bunch of information that's written to it. And so whenever we're happy with it, we could just go to file and just go to save or, or save as. You know, it's just a regular PHPP at this point. So, so it's just a normal PHPP. And when we're done with it, we can close it out. We can turn this off, and there we go. Everything is off. Um, don't worry about that. There you go. So that's off now. Um, and whenever we want, we can turn it back on and, and um, stream everything out ag uh, again. All right, so I think we'll close this first video here. Uh, in the future, of course, we'll try and keep the videos to a shorter length. But for this one, I did want to make sure that we got the, the sort of whole set of, um, uh, of elements here up and, and, and running. Um, and so if, if, if you like, uh, we will do some further videos and dive into the series in more depth. We'll sort of take a look at all of the individual component pieces one at a time, do things like add some windows or configure some U values, build our own assemblies, set up domestic hot water systems and ventilation systems, calculate shading, et cetera, et cetera.
So I hope uh, I hope that again I hope that worked for you. I hope that seems interesting and useful. And if it is, I'll look forward to seeing you back in further videos.